Hello gorgeous peeps and welcome to another heart palpitating episode of Techspert Weekly and this week it's a big fat juicy jubilee special. Congratulations to her Madge for stubbornly clinging on to life for 96 long bloody years and unfortunately I don't have any Union Jack Bunton or poppers or anything. By poppers I mean party poppers obviously not the pills. I wouldn't disrespect her Madge by being off my tits for the Jubilee special. But to commemorate the occasion I did draw a picture of Queenie riding a dragon like a proper badass. So anyhow that's me thankfully over with at long bloody last and I've got to say I'm not going to miss it particularly hard because certainly as far as tech news was concerned it was a bit of a piss poor month. Overall, about as much thrills and excitement as a porno star in Jacob Reese Mog and a broom handle with a picture of Boris's gun and face stuck on it. And oh, sorry, that's actually, that's a really disgusting image. I've even appalled myself with that one. I think I might actually throw up the six pints of best that I chucked down before I started the show. Anyway, tech launches this week were limited to some snazzy gaming headsets from Razer and Vivo's iQ Neo 6, which is a perfectly decent mid-range smartphone, but let's face it, it's not exactly going to get gadget nerds frantically rubbing their thighs in ecstasy. That said, I have done videos on the pair of them right here on the channel, so you should definitely 100% go and watch both of them back to back, maybe twice just to be sure. And did I mention smashing the subscribe button and absolutely pummeling the living shit out of that notifications bell? But anyhow, as this week was yet another soggy disappointment as far as tech-based shenanigans was concerned, I've hastily cobbled together a half assed preview on possibly one of the biggest and best smartphones set to launch this summer. We're talking Xiaomi 12 Ultra, baby. So go grab your Union Jack flag and the warmest pint of beer you can find and brace yourself for the Jubilee special. Texper Weekly Jubilee Special. Now in 2022, Xiaomi has already pumped out a trio of new flagship phones and I've reviewed two of these shiny blighters right here, the lovably compact Xiaomi 12 and its finger aching mega sized sibling, the Xiaomi 12 Pro. Xiaomi has also launched a cheaper model, the 12X, but I haven't had a chance to play with that one, so big fat mammary glands to it. Anyway, one Xiaomi 12 series handset has been rather conspicuous in its absence so far, and that is the most premium member of the family, the Xiaomi 12 Ultra. Last year's 11 Pro and 11 Ultra were launched on the same day, but this year something seems to be holding back that Ultra model, and chances are pretty good that it's Xiaomi's surprise announcement of its partnership with Leica. Leica is a German manufacturer specialising in cameras and lenses and until very recently they were all cozied up with Huawei helping the hapless Chinese giant to pump out some of the very best camera phones around. Until Huawei was suddenly and unceremoniously dumped on the naughty step by America which has probably been a major motivator for Leica to dump its former bestest bud and start knocking around with Xiaomi instead. The harlot! Anyways, the Xiaomi 12 Ultra is tipped to be the first Xiaomi blower packing a Leica branded camera and if these renders are accurate it's going to look like someone took the Honor Magic 4 Pro and then gave it even more of a beat down with the ugly stick. Still the camera itself should be hot stuff, although there's a lot of heated debate on the internet over what the actual specs will be, a lot of leaks and rumours point to a almighty 200 megapixel primary sensor on the Xiaomi 12 Ultra. Other more recent rumours say it'll sport a 50 megapixel Sony IMX989 camera sensor instead. It'll be the first time we've seen that sensor slapped on a smartphone. And of course we're yet to see just how much Leica DNA actually ends up in the 12 Ultra as the partnership was only just announced but apparently the camera tech was co-developed with their help. So here's hoping it's pretty bloody good stuff. And recently there's also been some sexy internet chat about a telephoto lens with 120 times maximum zoom and if that's true that sounds like a hilarious bit of woolly waving aimed directly at Samsung. Ah only 100 times space zoom eh you bloody pansy. Apparently the arse end of the Xiaomi 12 Ultra will come in a choice of ceramic or leather and at 6.73 inches the Ultra is going to be a bit of a beast. Although at least there's no sign of a silly pointless mini display around the back end this time. Brace yourself for some more hot leaked specs as well. Apparently around the front end of the Ultra you can expect a punchy premium 2K AMOLED screen supporting 1 to 120Hz refresh and that's backed of course by stereo speakers. You got the Snapdragon Age N1 backed by either 8 or 12 or 16 gigs of RAM. 16 gigs that's more than any laptop that I've ever owned. A near 5000 mAh battery with 120 watt wires charging and 50 watt wireless charging. 
overall some pretty lush stuff and of course the Xiaomi 12 Ultra ain't going to be cheap it's going to come packing a price tag over a grand no doubt but expectations are very high indeed especially with this new Leica partnership. I'm just going to hope now that the battery life isn't cack like it was on the Xiaomi 12 Pro. And as there's a complete lack of any interest in tech news whatsoever this week, that means it's time for the part of the show that's usually just as disturbing as that Jacob Reese mog image which I still have burned into my cerebellum. <sighs> it's viewer comments. Viewer comments. Are you supposed to be looking as if you're enjoying it? Yes. All right, so perhaps unsurprisingly, given that the Xperia 1 Mark IV was the main topic on last week's show, we've had quite a lot of correspondence about Sony's new flagship. Got a few people enthused about it, so Jesse, for one, is jumping right on board that Xperia Choo Choo Train. Choo Choo Train? Why have I suddenly regressed to the brain of a two-year-old? Uh, Jesse says, pre-ordered one here in Florida, and it will be my first Android phone since the HTC Eris from 2007. I don't think I can even remember that one, the Eris. But then, to be fair, back in the day, HTC were pumping out like a dozen handsets a week. They were like the Motorola of a decade ago. Uh, GS says, I've still got my Xperia 1, uh, presumably the original Mark 1. Uh, no need to constantly update your device, if I'm being honest. Yeah, basically, if the bugger still runs and the battery life hasn't gone to us, I guess the only real issue is, you know, if it's not getting any OS and security updates anymore. But if you're still happy with it, then yeah, may as well spend your cash on more worthwhile things like booze and uh, I don't know, what stocks in your shares, what, whatever it is the proper grown ups do with their money. Uh, Tired David says any news on face unlock for the Xperia 1 Mark IV? As far as I'm aware, there's none as usual. Sony always relied on the built-in Android face unlock for its previous Xperia smartphones. And of course that got ditched a while back. But apparently there's rumors that uh, face unlock will make a triumphant return in Android 13, the full release later this year. Although that might potentially just be for the Pixel phones, who knows? Next up, ZD says, Sony can do all it wants and put in the very best features, but what they really need to do is improve their designs, that's it. They still can't make an edge-to-edge -edge screen display and phones that are generally aesthetically pleasing to the eye. I've got to say, I, I don't actually mind the Xperia design at all. I, I really like the 21 by 9 finish, which makes them long and thin and just really comfortable to grip. Fnaf fnaf. Although, yes, it would be good if Sony changed it up just a little bit every now and then, you know, refreshed it a bit, because it is starting to get like the iPhones, just the same old look churned out year after year after year. It doesn't exactly stir the loins very much. Stir the loins, is that even an expression? It sounds quite painful, actually. I'm just imagining someone's loins being attacked by a giant whisk or something like that. It sounds like it might be part of that Jacob Reese mog thing again. Anyhow, moving swiftly onwards, uh, Bry says the best thing about the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV is that they've got rid of the Google Assistant button. Yeah, definitely one smartphone feature that hardly deserved a metaphorical kick right in its metaphorical cock. Pure Hyperbole says his voice is changing week by week. Is it? Is it? Uh, is it? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> not that I've noticed. I gotta say, like, am I going through some sort of reverse puberty? Or something? Are my testicles shrinking back into my body? Jesus Christ, I'm like a walking f***ing David Cronenberg film. You guys are going to give me a complex, man, I swear to God. Um, JazzyFizzle672 says, Your videos are way better than WKHD. Keep up the good work from a borough lad. All right, fellow northerner, always good to hear from a, uh, a fellow northeasterner uh, like you guys off. And we'll be playing you lads again next season as well in the uh, the good old championship. Probably getting our arses handed to us, but uh, but whatever. It'll be good to have some sort of local derby on the go again. Uh, Graham says, Plum Rum is a killer. I remember staying at a farm in France and they were hosting a Bastille Day party. The owner brought out homemade plum rum and specifically told everyone only to drink the small amount we were given. Only a northern beer monster didn't adhere to it and drank a quarter of a bottle. It was comatose for three days missing his ferry home. That stuff turned out to be 94% alcohol, although you wouldn't know it from the taste. I mean, sh** in hell, that's, that sounds like the kind of stuff you'd clean the drains with. That would put me right on my arse after like two sips or something. I'm a total lightweight these days. Literally, half a Bacardi Breezer and I'm anyone's. Uh, Mickey says, come on, Texpert, we need a Moto G82 review. Oh, don't I know it, Mickey. Don't I know it. Never fear, sir. I have put in my request for a review sample. Hopefully, it will be landing soon. Uh, so, yes, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, sorry, the sheer excitement of the thought of unboxing another Motorola smartphone has basically caused my brain to reset. 
another request, Secret Assassin 3 says, is an Honor Magic 4 Pro review coming anytime soon? Good news, Secret Assassin 3. That has actually already been shot. It's in the can, as they say. Uh, so hopefully it should be going live early next week. But if you can't wait that long, spoiler alert, didn't like it quite as much as I hoped I would. Sorry, Honor. Uh, Freddie M says, normally I'm listening to this journalistic excellence. Never heard this show referred to as journalistic excellence before, but I'll certainly take that. In sh**ty Croydon. But guess what? This week I'm listening from a departure gate in Singapore. I've had about five Johnny Walkers and Cork, and guess what? You sound as pissed as I do. Very good stuff. Hope you had a, uh, a good trip out there. And uh, yeah, Singapore, very different vibe to Croydon, got to say. Although of those two places, I've only ever been attacked in one of them, and that is Singapore. That was by a mental peacock, which I admittedly probably unlikely to come across in Croydon. And next up, Essex Ginge says, it really feels as if phones have peaked. At the top end of the market, seems like nothing has a wow factor anymore. I, I know 100% what you mean. At the top end of the market, it's very much like, oh, just everything just looks like their rivals, like predecessors. There's no real innovation going on there as far as certainly the design is going or much at all, really, to be honest. The only phone that I've reviewed recently that impressed me is actually one that I can't talk about right now because it's under embargo until next week, I've just remembered. So good thing I didn't start banging on about that. Otherwise, it's basically just foldable tech, which is very impressive Like from a uh, technical point of view. Certainly, some of the hinge technology that they're coming out with these days is incredible stuff. But again, not particularly thrilling for the consumer and very niche devices as well. Something that did really make me go, ooh, that's pretty bloody good, is Oppo's rollable phone, which sadly never actually came to the market. Uh, the Oppo X, I think it was called. Fondle it in just the right way and it magically expands in your hand all of the jokes right here. And next up, Will Rivera says, on a scale of water to whiskey, how excited are you for the nothing phone? That's quite a good scale, actually. I'm liking that. Uh, for the nothing phone, I'd probably place it at around a warm, flat pint of lager that somebody's put their fag out in. No, it's a little bit harsh on nothing, to be fair. I mean, they are just one giant gassy hype bubble at the moment. They've, you know, how long have they been around now? Like two years? And all they've put out is a pair of true wireless earbuds. But I am very intrigued to see if Cole can recapture some of that early OnePlus magic. And I certainly will be approaching the nothing phone with an open mind. Uh, I just hope they sort out the bloody launcher by then. And better make this the last one because I've run massively out of time. Um, Kyron says, in all honesty, watching your show is a bit better than getting monkeypox. I mean, at least you said better. I'll take that. And to be fair, that's probably the second best review I've had of this show after the guy who said it was journalistic excellence or whatever. So there you go. Both of those can go on the poster. If I had a poster, I don't actually have a poster, but I might get a poster just so I can slap that on it. So anyway, massive thanks to everyone who commented last week. There were so many comments, over 200 comments in all. So they can't get through all of them uh, because that would then just basically take an entire week and I won't be able to do any other videos. But again, massive thanks and please do slap your comments down below. We'll try and smash away through as many of those as possible next week. And speaking of next week. This is about next week. We do actually have some shit happening next week. Woo! Um, so next Wednesday, Realme and ZTE will both be launching some fresh new smartphones. Excellent. Come back for more on all that jazz. We've also got a Black Shark launch tipped for the Thursday. And please do take my hand in a platonic fashion and join me for yet another thrilling bit of escapades on Techspert Weekly next Friday. Uh, if you can be bothered, thanks for watching to this point in this show. Bloody hell, you masochist. And have yourselves a rather wonderful jubilee weekend bye everyone love you <clears throat> is my voice really changing is it changing i don't know it sounds it sounds the same to me it sounds the same to me it sounds the same to me